Hello and welcome to the section of the Chemistry Tutor. Uh, in this section we're going to really roll up our sleeves and start to calculate uh, what is happening in some of these chemical reactions. So the title of this section is called Reaction Stoichiometry. Um, you know, a lot of students get to this section or at least fl flip through the table of contents in a chemistry book and they'll see a giant word like stoichiometry and immediately get worried or freak out that it's just this really hard thing. Uh, you're going to have to trust me here. It is so, so simple, the method I'm going to teach you. You can calculate anything related to what a reaction is going to produce or what it's going to consume using some very, very simple, simple tricks that I'm going to show you. And I've kind of laid the foundation for it, showing you how important that unit cancellation technique is. And here you're going to really see the power of it. All right, so stoichiometry just means, in general, using a balanced chemical reaction to calculate what's basically going to form or will it really what's even been consumed. So you have to use the balanced reaction. That's why we covered how to balance reactions a minute ago. So any time on a quiz or an exam or in a homework, if you're ever, ever asked to calculate how much of something will form, either how many moles or how many grams, or how much of something was consumed in a reaction, um, you have to use the balanced reaction. So double check to make sure that it's balanced. And if it's not balanced, then you have to balance it yourself before you can do any calculations related to uh, what's been formed. All right. So the easiest way to show you how easy stoichiometry is, is to show you. So let's do that here. Let's look at a chemical reaction. Let me just write it down. This one's already going to be balanced. Uh, C3H8, which is propane. You've probably heard of propane before plus 5O2, that's just adding oxygen, yields 3CO2, carbon dioxide, plus 4H2O, so 4 uh, moles of water. This is already balanced. You should always verify that it is, though. Uh, 3 carbons, 3 carbons, 8 hydrogens, you have 2 times 4 is 8 hydrogens, 10 oxygens, and here you have 6 oxygens, 2 times 3 is 6, plus another 4 gives you 10 oxygens, so this guy is balanced. Now the problem says, how many moles of carbon dioxide are formed when 0.529 moles of C3H8, which is propane, is burned? Because this is a burning reaction. You're taking some propane, you're putting oxygen with it, and the way you get that to happen is you light it on fire and they combine, and then you get uh, carbon dioxide plus water. By the way, almost anything you burn is going to produce CO2 plus H2O, carbon dioxide plus water. Almost always that's what's going to come out of any kind of combustion reaction. Uh, especially the kind that you'll study in chemistry one. All right, so how many moles of carbon dioxide are formed when we uh, consume 0.529 moles of this propane? So this is a great example. It's very simple, but if you don't know how to set it up, you're, you're just you're wondering, what do I do? Well, I have the reaction here. I know how much I've used of this propane. Where do I start? Let me show you the bulletproof way to do all of these problems, all right? So pay attention because we're going to do this over and over and over and over and over again. What you do is you write down what you know. You always write down what you know. What we know is we have 0.529 moles. And don't just put moles down. You have to say moles of what are you talking about? Moles of C3H8. And I draw my horizontal line and I draw my vertical line. What we're going to do is a unit cancellation here. This is one of the first things I taught you in chemistry and this is why it's so important. What we need to do is come up with a conversion factor. What we're trying to end up with is moles of carbon dioxide. Moles of carbon dioxide. But we need to know how moles of carbon dioxide are related to moles of this propane, because that's what we started with. So how do we get that? We get it from the reaction. We know that for every one mole of this propane, three moles, 